God bless football, Billy Gill. God bless football, Mikey, eh? God bless football, Fuentes. God bless football, Stugatz. Thank you. I mean, a little mm. more enthusiasm, perhaps, yeah, Fuentes, really. you know? I, I was mean, wondering also yeah, if it was just right? me or not. It's, yeah. it's, it's early. Okay, so it I'm, wasn't just me. Good. <laughs> right. It's early. I'm doing things. I'm looking up right. the line. You know, we're trying to figure out, you know. Is what do you mean? It's Friday good? afternoon. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, I mean, it's very early for a Friday afternoon. Yeah. I'm doing things. <laughs> I'm doing things. I'm doing things. Doing things. Busy guy. Busy guy. <laughs> it's week zero, Billy. College football is here, man. It's, it's no it's, longer called week zero. It's week one, as Greg Cody explained to us on the Dan Levitard show with Stu Gatz. It is a it is a week one that lasts two weekends. So it's uh, week one, part one, because we have uh, like six or seven teams. I think eight teams that play twice in week one. So yeah. the rare doubleheader for some of these teams. <laughs> we'll find out. It kicks off, by the way, Florida State. Georgia Tech, yeah, twelve Eastern in Dublin because yeah, of course you think Dublin, of course you think Florida State and Georgia Tech. Yeah, you think of so, Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. Mm-hmm. So their problems w- was with the number zero, not with the fact that the word week meaning two weeks. Like that's that's what they feel like they had to change the word zero. Know. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, you have college football this weekend. The games mean something. It's Florida State that's and all. Georgia Tech. You have a Hawaii midnight game. I don't think Delaware State caught their plane. I, did Delaware State make it to Hawaii? I was reading stories last night. I'm concerned about this because my strategy every Saturday is lose as much money as possible and then bet it all in Hawaii at midnight. It makes you feel alive. I mean, it does. No, don't, not necessarily the most Maybe responsible don't do betting that. advice. Maybe yeah, don't, don't do that. Do that. I'm not nope. advising that you do it. Don't I'm do just. <laughs> I didn't say, hey, this is what done. you should do. I didn't. I didn't say that. Football season I, is a marathon, Stu. God, it's not a sprint. That yeah. On top out, of on top of, by the way, week one in college football, or week one, part one, whatever you want to call it. Uh, also, it is fantasy season, and we have yes. Mike Wright, our friend from Fantasy Footballers, back this week, and he's going to be helping you, the listener, set up your fantasy team, and us too. And also, we love Nitro. You love Nitro. Nitro is not back because we thought that you guys would actually want some fantasy advice, not explain to Nitro why it is that you need a running back on your fantasy football team. We love Nitro. God bless them. But, uh, you know, we thought this would be more beneficial to you, the fantasy consumers, Mm -hmm. than uh, just picking Nitro's team. Yeah, so Mike More broad strokes here. Yeah, Yeah. Mike Wright, uh, fantasy footballers, is going to join us. Uh, We do love him. We do love Nitro. We realized uh, probably midway through the second go around with Nitro and Mike Wright that this was a tune out for the audience. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, no, no, unfair. I don't know if I would classify it as such because there are discussions to should we do it again at some point. But headed into the season, we thought, you know what, let's have the focus be on Mike Wright and not Nitro. I know, but Billy, you will agree. It's not our best idea. The, the fact that we were having Mike Wright help Nitro and only Nitro who pick his fantasy team probably doesn't serve our audience very well. I mean, well, here's the problem. When discussing fantasy, I've learned <laughs> the best way to do it and the most fun way to do it is calls or, you know, you have like user sure. viewer submissions, whatever. Yes. Right. What mm-hmm. really happened with Nitro is. Mike EA was getting mad, and he's like, this is a waste of my time. I'm not getting anything from Mike Wright. I have access to Mike Wright, and all we're doing is learning about Nitro's yes. team. And the guy's asking all these stupid why questions. Why shouldn't I draft two kickers was one of the ones. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why yeah. do I need – should I have two kickers was a question. So I'm concerned I have this tight end. Did I take a kicker in – the why, why not take round. him in the seventh round early? Is, right. And for the record, for the record, I love Nitro. I just yeah, didn't love too. that segment. That's sure. it. No, it's, it's, it was also, you know, when he when night when you know Mike would ask him, like, well, who's on your team? He's like, my quarterback is Jay Allen. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the guy from the, the guy from was this. All was their first names was, the team. was their first initial. <laughs> and it was always like the guy from San Diego. It's like, well, that's not a team anymore. That's the, yeah, there is no San Diego. <laughs> yeah, somehow we made it to the conference finals, I think, in his fantasy league. <laughs> Yeah. That's how good yeah. Mike Wright is. That's how good Mike Wright is. Yes, he's good Mike Wright is. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Not just that, but like that honestly is the secret to fantasy is that I've been in so many leagues where the person who knows the least, not that I'm saying that I know a lot, but the person that knows the least often succeeds because they have absolutely no emotional attachment whatsoever and they yes. don't overthink absolutely anything. They just mm-hmm. figure out the scoring system and like, yeah, this person, I'm just going to plug them in. And it's like, oh, why would you get rid of this person? And it's like, because they're not doing well. And it's like, but they were the MVP of the season two years ago. Like, it's just a rough start. And they're like, no, nah, it doesn't matter. They end up being absolutely 
absolutely right more times than not. <laughs> I always I, every time because you're so right. Like there's so many players I hold grudges against for bad seasons, like two seasons ago, and then they end up having a great season. But I'm still mad about 2009 or whatever. Uh, yeah. Before we get to Mike Wright coming up here in just a minute, um, one guy that I am high on in fantasy, and he is worth a late round flyer. He was named the starter this week. I named him the starter this week before they named him the starter. That is Bo Nix in Denver. I am intrigued, Mikey A, by Bo Nix in Denver. Can I ask you guys a question? Is sure. Bo Nix uh-huh. good? New game. Is Bo Nix good? Don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is Bo Nix good? I don't know. I, I have a follow up. Can I ask you guys a question? What? Is Sean Payton? I don't know. I don't know. I don't 25 know. At 25 and 21 without Drew Brees. Yeah. Not stellar. I yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I listen, I know it's a football show. We're supposed to be experts. We're supposed to have answers. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. How about that? <laughs> Mike Wright. Next. Football is back. It is the best time of year. We, uh, and like, we, let's get this preseason out the way and let's play some real football and win some real fantasy games. I feel like, Stugatz, you should apologize to Mike because you made it Why? seem like this is just like a gimmick <laughs> thing. Like, oh, this time of year, his little podcast just jumps ahead because everyone wants fantasy football advice when like the reality is your podcast is at the top of the charts year round, which is kind of crazy because football <laughs> season is, you know, however many months, five, six months long. And then the rest of the time you're still up there so much. So Stu guys, and I have an admission to make, and I, I don't think that I should be admitting this. Okay. Um, and Mike, I hope that you don't uh, hold this against us in any way, uh, shape or form. But Mike last year joined our show on a number of occasions, as you mentioned, to help with nitro. And we, have competed against Mike and his podcast in the sports podcast awards the past uh, two or three years. And we were yeah. in the same category. Mike's in a couple different categories, but in the football category, we were both there and we won uh back to back years. And then last year we did not. And I did a dirty little trick. If I'm going to be honest with you, and you're supposed to submit little clips that show the different range of your podcast. And one of the clips that I put in there was a clip with you, Mike, and Nitro. And I said, look at how great we've covered fantasy, where I was using you to compete against yourself for an award. And sure enough, your podcast actually did better than our podcast, so the trick didn't work. Oh, no, that is that's <laughs> that is fantastic. I, I hate, don't hate the player, I hate the game. I got to respect the, <laughs> respect the sneakiness. I like it. But I still need to apologize, Billy. I need to oh, apologize. Yeah, well, yeah, you know. Okay. All right, sorry, Mike. <laughs> uh, there's room for all of us, man. How many drafts have uh, have you done already? How many drafts? Uh, real drafts, I've only done a handful. They they really are. They're sneaking up. You know, starting next week is when I'll really be drafting way too much. All right. So, how many drafts do you have in your future here? Oh gosh, I don't know. They just they they pop up like weeds. I mean, before it's all said and done, I'll have done probably ten plus, and then I mean, it, if like. There's people, I mean, there's real degenerates out there. What well, shout out to all of you who are playing. They're playing best ball. They're doing drafts as soon as, like, the Super Bowl is done. Like, to be like, oh, I'm going to take care of next year right now. It's right. a wild world, man. Well, How I was going to ask you. I'm sorry, sorry, Billy. I was going to ask you, Mike. Like, do you ever wake up? Like, you just wake up one morning and you say, you know what? Not today. <laughs> just not today. <laughs> uh, that, that happens a lot for the waiver wire where you're like, oh, good Lord. I need, I need to go put waivers in over here. How soon, Mike, is too soon for a fantasy draft? Because I'm in uh, two leagues, which is not that much, honestly. And I'm the commissioner of one, so I'm kind of responsible for setting the date on this fantasy draft. And Wait. I don't like doing it too early. I don't like doing it after, you know, just one preseason game because you never know what can happen, um, you know, at training camp. You never know what can happen in these games. Obviously, the big starters are not going to be playing in week three of the preseason, so there's not really a risk there. But I always kind of like to wait until the last minute. So sometimes Sometimes it's also just to get like who do I get in my last round of the draft? Like who's someone that's probably going to sneak onto a roster that may steal some points here or there? Do you want me to answer the how late is to draft? To, how late is to draft or the the player question? He did. He well, has two can, questions there. He yeah, did. you know <laughs> how late is too late to draft? Or I guess sure. what is the right time to set up a draft? Uh, honestly, it's it's really about the comfort for the, the comfort and knowledge of the fantasy football players and and how much risk they want to take on because. 
the, it's the injury thing is the biggest, right? Where your second round pick, whatever, first round pick, they go out and then they're hurt before the season even starts, and you're just your team is toast because you've already burned that pick. So we're uh, our main league. We call it the league of record. We are for the first time ever. We are drafting kick off Thursday. Like we're drafting. Oh, we're, wow. We're scrambling to put our oh. teams in. And then we're all hanging out watching uh, the opening night, but like it, there is an a there is an advantage, or I should say a a strategy of if you really know football and everyone in your group knows football, an earlier draft can be fun because it over the over August that's when these later players start to reveal themselves to the general public because the 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 casual players are trying to catch up. Uh, so a player, if if you want my my late round player right now. Uh, it's Rico Dowdle, running back of the Dallas Cowboys. The the Cowboys, despite all this C.D. Lamb nonsense and Jerry Jones, just uh, s- someone needs to get we got we got to get Jerry Jones out of there of running things for the Cowboys. It's time for the new regime to take over. Jerry, you had a good run, but they're they're going to be a good offense. That's what I think you can project confidently about them. Is they they're going to be a good team. They're going to be a, a a top fifteen offense at worst. And I did a huge study of looking at running backs who aren't drafted to be great, but then end up sneaking into the top 24. And there's about five or so of these players every year. And the thing that all of them have in common is they're on great offenses. So I I understand that Ezekiel Elliott is the name, and it's Mr. Cowboy is back with the team, but he... It, he hasn't been the Zeke that we we knew and loved for. It's been a while since we've really seen that player. And even all the Cowboys beat reporters, where the moment pads came on, Rico Dowdle has been the best running back on this team, and he is being drafted after Zeke and just extremely late. I think there is a uh, a good chance that Rico Dowdle emerges as the leader of the timeshare and the most uh, valuable fantasy football running back from that team. All right, Mike, so people who have a bad commissioner out there and they have to draft, you know, this week or next week, they're not doing it opening night of the NFL season. How do you handle, how do you go about, if you're drafting in the next seven to ten days, let's say, how do you handle guys like Jamar Chase, C.D. Lamb, and Ayuk? What do you do there? So the big three wide receivers I'm not as concerned about. Uh, like, they, they know the system. Nothing has really changed for those players. And it's not like, the running back position. Look, I never played run. I, I don't know if you guys know this. I never played running back in the NFL, but I can make mm. some assumptions about playing. Uh, is that your body has to get ready? You're going to be in a car crash every 45 seconds when you're playing running back in the NFL. And Josh Jacobs last year during his holdout, I was mentioning on the show, I'm like, guys, I'm a little concerned here that he's not out there getting the reps, getting his body really ready to play. Now, maybe I just got to the correct result with the wrong process, but it, it still led me to be very concerned about Josh Jacobs. For wide receivers, though, these guys are the elite of the elite. I'm not concerned. They're going to play. Like, they're not going to hold out right. through, the, through the season. At least I'm, I understand there's whispers that Jamar Chase is like, there, there are people saying he won't step a foot on a football field without the extension. Once game checks are up in the air and you miss a game, you miss a game check, that's a whole different level of uh, cash. Like That's that's people's entire year's salary that they're going to skip out in a game. I don't think they're going to do it. You mentioned before that you created this list of running backs based on good offenses. How right. much stock do you put into – a guy being on a good offense versus, say, a Deontay Johnson who's going to be on probably a bad offense. Sure. For running backs, it's extremely important. You have to have, you know, like there's there's some key tenets that we need to have for our fantasy running backs. Number one is volume. Like we, The phrase volume is king for fantasy running backs. That has been true for a very long time. That's the reason why in the first round you're seeing just essentially three guys. You see Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson, because those are the only three running backs we can. Well, number one, they're really, really good at football. But two, you can confidently project these are three down running backs who are only going to be taken off of the field uh, when they're tired. You know, you project it because Arthur Smith uh, has been kicked out of Atlanta for failing to do that, in my opinion. Uh, so, so that's 
that's why they're up there at the top. So if you're not going to find a guy who has volume, which is the majority of the running back position now, it's it's all platoons. Okay, now I'm going to factor in efficiency. I'm going to factor in how good is the offense because I need I need touchdowns. I need touchdowns, and I need guys who are actually catching the ball because uh, that's just that's how fantasy scoring works in half point or full point PPR. Yeah, I get there's some holdouts out there that play they call it standard where they don't get a point for catching the ball but those are like those are dinosaurs those those guys are going they're dying off it, it's all half point full point ppr so it really is finding high scoring offenses and efficient running backs because it's not the 90s anymore where 20 plus running backs are going to get all of the work they're they're rotating way too much 12 team draft where does mike Wright like what's the preferred position for mike Wright? So, I'm good, I would say, to about maybe the 106, the 107, uh, because that that way, to me, you know, I tier, I put these players into, like, buckets, and those three running backs I mentioned, those guys are in a bucket, and then the big-time wide receivers of, of Tyreek, CeeDee, Jamar, those are, I feel really, really confident in them. It sucks that I don't get to say Justin Jefferson's in that bucket, but with Sam Darnold being the guy for the Minnesota Vikings and you don't have the the unknown hope of J.J. McCarthy coming to take over halfway through the year anymore because of the, the meniscus injury, the Darnold numbers are scary, man. They're re- they are really, really scary. Jesus. Not scary enough to drop Justin Jefferson, who in my opinion is the best wide receiver in football. Can't drop him out of the first, but it's enough of a tiebreaker that I put those other three guys above him. So... If I'm at the 106, I guarantee I get one of those six players, and then second round I get the best player back. You put a lot of stock in like offensive coordinator changes in terms of like fantasy and what that might do for players, like a Cliff Kingsbury or Kellen Moore. Like, do you does that impact players greatly or not that much to you? It is definitely part of the process. Uh, Kellen Moore would be the name I would go to. Of wow. He's kind of floating around the NFL. Can't seem to hold down a job. That, that, sorry, Kellen. That does that does not affect <laughs> what I'm doing over here. I'm playing a different game than you are. <laughs> and the last couple of years, Kellen Moore has given us greatness. Like you know, Ceedee Lamb, it were the the real breakout last year before Keenan Allen got hurt. Like he was he was absolutely elite. And now we're looking at him over in Philadelphia. The big thing is. Bringing motion to the offense, you know, we we've kind of started to talk about that a bit more. It's a it's a deeper concept for fantasy football, but casual fans should get used to it. Looking at the teams and the offenses in particular who use motion the most, just rattle off any top tier offense that you can think of, and they are they're there. They're using motion all the time, and Kellen Moore was a part of that, so he's going to bring that to Philadelphia with tons of reports of it already of moving guys like Devontae Smith, moving him into the slot, moving him all over the field, creating actual mismatches. It's not the we're really high T. We're just it's man versus man. We're going to beat you. No, use some strategy, man. <laughs> like There's a reason that the Miami Dolphins get Tyreek moving because he's already at full speed once the play starts. It's a huge advantage, so use that. So for the Philadelphia Eagles, we're very excited what Kellen Moore should be bringing to this offense for a team that was, if if memory serves, like they were near the bottom of the league in terms of motion, and you saw what happened to their offense. Like the second half of the year, it sure felt like people had figured out how to stop the Philadelphia Eagles. Hopefully they can't stop them. Uh, I am hesitant to bring Mike Fuentes into this conversation and allow Mike EA to ask another question because what I what I want for this segment is for Mike Wright to help the audience, not to help the individual people associated with this show, with their draft and their team. Uh, and with that said, I bring in Mike Fuentes to ask a question I'm sure has nothing to do in terms of positive information for the audience and is only concerned about his own team. Mike Fuentes, go ahead. Well, actually, me and Danny B are taking a look at Mike's desk, and he has power line there next to him on his right, Tua Burrow, his uh, Air Jordan coffee mug. It looks like Newman right here in front of the camera. And then I'm really in love with the huge Indiana Jones Funko Pop there underneath 
underneath the guitar. That's probably my favorite thing. My but, man. Yeah, but Mike, none of that's none of that matters right now. I'm doing a 16 team league this year. Oh Jesus. Okay. Good that's lord. A lot. That's, that's a lot. I mean, you, you, listen, you got off to a good start. You talked about his <laughs> desk and all the things around it. What's the matter with well, you? He sucked me in. Dude, look, anyone who knows the the icon that power line actually is they're okay in my book yeah that's right darn right eye to eye goofy darn guy. right a banger yeah it's but, your book I mean, <laughs> well, but my real question is i feel like tight end is kind of one of the most shallow positions it's basically you have laporta and then you have kelsey and then just a grab grab bag of guys so if i want to like target somebody in later rounds do you have a suggestion outside of like a McBride or somebody who might be a sleeper or even like a Kyle Pitts who's kind of in like a now or never type year? Like who would you suggest would be a good sleeper for a tight end in this coming season? Sure. I, I would start off saying that this year at tight end, the at least guys at the top, it's way heavier than it's been in a long time. It, it has been Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, log out. It has been that for years and years. And now you got Kelsey Laporta, McBride, Andrews, and I'll even put Dalton Kincaid in there. Those, those are five players that none of them would shock me if they finish as the the tight end one at the end of the year. But I would say the 16-teamer is a little bit different. So this is a 12-teamer sleeper. We'll start there. What is Jake Ferguson of the Dallas Cowboys? My second Cowboy I'm going to uh, mention here. But he led tight ends in red zone targets. It just didn't come through as much as it should historically speaking, Dak Prescott has always favored uh, the tight end position going way, way back. But Ferguson was essentially a rookie last year. It's his second year, but it was his first year really being the starter. So he can even improve from what he was, which is was really a breakout uh, for fantasy football. And if you're looking, let's see, a deep, deep sleeper. All right, I, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you two. One of them I hate. But I have to bring it up anyways. It's It depends on where you play, I should say, depending on your platform. But Taysom Hill of the New Orleans Saints, I hate it because he's it's so gadgety and it drives me crazy. But I'm not sure I love anything in this world the way that the New Orleans Saints seem to love Taysom Hill. Like this, <laughs> I, I don't, this guy gets to line up all over the field. He gets to take snaps away from the starting quarterback sometimes. And there's platforms out there like Sleeper where he is still eligible to go into the tight end position. And then other than that, dude, you you, you got to start strong. I'll say that. It, it it's If you can start strong and buy a few weeks at the tight end position and then figure it out on the waiver wire, one of my favorite guys to start that right now at least, just start, Hunter Henry of the New England Patriots. He got off to a really, really hot start last year. And his opening schedule, his opening three to four games, very favorable, at least based off of what defenses did last year. Defenses will change, of course. But Hunter Henry is a guy who I think that if you have completely punted the position, even in a 16-teamer, I don't know if anybody's really going to be on Hunter Henry. And you can pick him up and play in the first couple weeks and then just make that your priority for the waiver uh, those first couple weeks, grab a tight end. Mike, uh, for for me, I haven't done my drafts yet, but I've done a lot of mocks. And one name that keeps jumping out at me where I can't believe he's still there. I mean, go back a year. Cooper Cup was going top eight picks probably. And now I'm seeing him in the fourth round, fifth round. But, like, he was hurt and he came back and he still got his volume. What do you make of, like, the Puka Nakua Cooper Cup share uh, with, with the Rams? I think that people are writing Cooper Cup off just too quick. Look, P- Puka Nakua is – it's extremely exciting what he did of breaking the rookie reception record and all that. Like, the fact that he did that from being a fifth-round draft pick, I think that's part of, like, such of the intrigue. You know, when when Jamar Chase, is, his rookie year is awesome for fantasy football, no one's surprised. But because of the whole story of Puka Nakua, I think that really does – it gets in your bones, man. Fantasy football is emotional. We try to pretend that it's just it's statistics and I'm a robot and I'm going to – no, man. I love, The guys who are on my team, those are the best players in the NFL because they're on my fantasy football team. And when they have bad games, like it's, it's personally affecting me. So the fact that Cooper Cup, who when he came back, like you said, from the injury, he did have a couple good games. I think both him and Puka can coexist. I think Puka's being drafted too high. 
And I think Cooper Cup's being drafted too low. Having said all that, everything rides on Matthew Stafford, who, I mean, look, I think we're okay. He had a little bit of hamstring tightness, but his his injury concerns, like if if Stafford goes down, that whole everything, Kyron, Puka, Cooper Cup, it's all ruined. And he has been a little bit more fragile dealing like back, like just these chronic back problems. So that's that's the risk involved with the Rams. But Cup's ADP is sensational, and hopefully we're not moving it. Mike, has there been a guy over all the years you've been playing fantasy football that you drafted and he absolutely wrecked your season, wrecked your league, wrecked your team, and you swore never to draft him again? Uh, yeah, there's there are definitely those those players. Uh, yeah. Recently, it's been T. Higgins, okay, who who and he just keeps breaking my heart over and over. But I <laughs> but I still pound the table and I say he's a really good player. He's not <laughs> like he's not Jamar Chase level. He he doesn't have to be. He's he's a really really good wide receiver. And uh, my my main league it's a keeper league, so you get you know you get three players and you hold over. And so, so these last two years, I've had T, and it's just been emotionally draining for me. <laughs> and yet, I'll be back over here saying he's got Joe Burrow. Everything makes sense for T Higgins. Uh, and then the other one was uh, it wasn't a draft, but it was DeAndre Swift, the year back when he was on not the Eagles year, but the Lions year, where I traded essentially at like all my big ammo to trade in my main league to go for a championship, all of it went into DeAndre Swift. It didn't work. It, no. <laughs> no, it didn't work. No. And, I, and, then I was, and then I'm stuck I was holding right the bag too. because yeah. there's nothing I can do. I can't right. make good trades. I've My ammo's gone. No one wants Swift. So we'll see how he does for the Bears, but he, uh, him and T are the most recent uh, fantasy burns all over my body. <laughs> you seem to be very high on Anthony Richardson from what I've seen. I think I saw that in your rankings in a four-point uh, touchdown league. You have him higher than Patrick Mahomes on your rankings. I, I, I can go and verify that, but I will say, uh, regardless of that, yes, extremely bullish on Anthony Richardson. And it's he is a he is the difficult case where you can get mad that fantasy football is not real football. Like these guys that run, these quarterbacks that run, it's it's it is a totally unfair advantage. That's like the reason why Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts are the elite of elite for fantasy quarterbacks is because they run so much. And that's just that's simple math. Ten yards on the ground, one point. Twenty five passing yards, one point. I'd rather a guy who runs for fifty plus yards every single game. And it's just it's projecting what Anthony Richardson could do. Obviously, it's it's really high risk. We've seen him play two games, two yeah. full games. We've seen him been in more, but he keeps getting knocked out with injuries. So it's it's a really high risk uh, situation for him. But I think that he's going to run so much, and as long as he can, you know, give us three thirty two hundred or so passing yards, that with the amount that I think he's going to run, especially around the goal line. He's going to be one of these guys that maybe you don't necessarily want to watch it because he's completing 58% of his passes. But when he's running that much and, and getting all those rushing touchdowns, you're not going to care. Is Does, Jalen Hurts someone we should be concerned about with, uh, with Chase and Kelsey retiring? So I think it's, it's a combination of things, right? Because you have Jason Kelsey. We get to find out this year the tush push. Who was really responsible for it? Because the the broadcasts like to remind you each and every single time that he does it. You know that guy squats six hundred fifty pounds. You're like, yes, I know Troy. You 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 already told me that this game that that he is very strong. I get it. He has strong legs, but is it Jason Kelsey? Because other teams have tried to do it, and they can't seem to to have the success rate that the Philadelphia Eagles have. You also have Saquon Barkley, who, uh, like I, I just mentioned, DeAndre Swift. Swift actually had a ton of carries inside the five. He just was a professional at getting tackled and stopped at the one yard line, which gave all those rushing touchdowns <laughs> to Jalen Hurts. He was Saquon so Barkley. I mean, you want to talk about guys that squat? <laughs> Saquon Barkley could do that too. <laughs> so I think that that will be uh, the difference of. I, I think the rushing touchdowns for Jalen Hurts go down. 
But all that stuff I talked about with Kellen Moore, you're hoping it balances out with some more passing touchdowns, which should it really should happen. It was his touchdown mark was too low last year. Uh, Jaden Daniels seems to be one of those guys that you might want to get. Like, what do you do with him? Where 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 is he going in mock drafts, Jaden Daniels? So he is one of our favorite targets. Our my my favorite personal quarterback targets. It starts with Kyler Murray because you can get him usually in like the sixth or seventh round, and like he is back. The fact that he the moment he came back last year for the Arizona Cardinals, they went from one of the worst offenses in the league to immediately a top 10 offense is just because Kyler was back. Now you add Marvin Harrison Jr. Kyler's my favorite target, but Jaden is right up there. He might even be my second favorite guy to draft because of the upside. Everything I just said about a quarterback running, it applies 100% to Jaden Daniels. Plus Jaden Daniels, like I'm more confident as Daniels, Daniels being a good passer in the NFL than I am for Anthony Richardson. Like, wow. The numbers at LSU are outrageous. Meanwhile, the college tape on Richardson, it's tough. man. You would see him throw a pass that only he could throw, and then the very next pass, you're like, has this guy ever thrown a football? Like it, that's, that's how wild the accuracy jumps were for Richardson. But Jaden Daniels, just absolutely John Madden football-type numbers from LSU last year. Cliff... I know him well because I'm an Arizona boy, so I've I watched his offenses. They're not the most creative things in the entire world, but I think that you'll get enough that drafting him is a really good idea. We've been telling people, even if you invest, you know, whenever you invest in a quarterback, you might want to draft Jaden Daniels at the end just in case. He is the prototypical late round quarterback that can break fantasy football. Like it's a long time ago, but Lamar, Lamar's MVP season, he was being drafted right right around where Jane Daniels was I had drafted. Him. Yeah, yeah, it, it, and it was like you, I, I screw I, you could have screwed up eight picks, but because you got Lamar right, he turned into a championship team. Mike, when should you start thinking about a quarterback? Not in the first round, not in the second round, right? Yeah, no, don't do it that early. Uh, but the numbers are actually it, – it plays out more of take the early guy, take you know Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. You can take them in, in, in Mahomes. I'll go, I'll go Allen, Hurts, Mahomes, Lamar. If you're going to go early, it's okay because the, the hit rate, historically talking about quarterbacks drafted in that range, the hit rate for them to at least be a top five quarterback is very strong. Obviously – if you draft a quarterback, the first one, you want him to be the first overall quarterback. But just saying the percentage chance that they will not destroy you is pretty good. It's actually those middle quarterbacks. Those are the guys that historically are not coming through with their floor and it's not coming through with their ceiling. Right. So those middle-round quarterbacks, that's actually where I avoid it. I either jump in early or I wait uh, later and I'm, I'm leaving the draft with like Jared Goff and Jaden Daniels. The Fantasy Footballers 10th Anniversary Megalist Show is going to be held this Saturday in Los Angeles Live at the Palace Theater. For tickets, go to BallersLive.com. Mike, congratulations first on 10 years. When you started you this. You seem surprised you think... it was this Saturday, by the way. No, <laughs> no. it's that I just, I'm just i wondering if Mike is surprised that 10 years on, this is where he is right now. Uh, yeah. Con- not on this shitty show is not what I meant. <laughs> right. So uh, this show started... <laughs> where the, the three of us all works together at a tech company making video games where all we wanted to do was spend our time talking about fantasy football. That company actually goes under. We're all trying to find jobs. The other guys are working, like, getting their real estate license. I'm trying to start a, a beard oil company. I'm trying to, like, what are we going to do, boys? And then it's – and we're like, hey, it's three guys upstairs in some in a kid's converted bedroom – just sweating our balls off because it's Arizona and you have to turn the AC off to record because that's how loud it was in that house. The fact that it's there to 10 years later and we have like a, a big office, we have multiple employees, we have an incredible team. Yes, it is extremely surprising. What is your personal favorite fantasy, I guess, you know, type league? Like, is it, you know, is it individual teams? Like, what, what is your preference, Mike? Uh, my preference, first off, is the ones that I win. 
I like right. those ones the best. Yeah, of course. But, mm. but I, uh, I I like keeper leagues. I, I mean, I, look, I Walmart, hate keeper leagues, man. Oh, get oh, get on board, it. man! <laughs> look, Dynasty is really fun because yeah. you get to like. I mean, I I had I just so I drafted Evan Ingram in our dynasty league at in the rookie draft. I just traded him this year. So his entire career wow. was on my team. So it's like Evan Ingram's one of my guys. I'll love that guy forever. Hard so to let that, go, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, very, very, very <laughs> difficult. But so it's it but those can be tough. Like if your team falls apart and you're trying to rebuild and actually trying to win, it can take a while. Where keepers gives you just a little taste of that where maybe you find lightning in a bottle. Like our main keeper league, I got Antonio Brown right before he turned into Antonio Brown, and I kept him through that whole entire run, and people hated it because they knew in that league no one else is ever going to have Antonio Brown. He's mine. He's on my team. Right. So getting a taste of that, the the attachment to some of the players, I like that more than the full start over, and I like it a little bit more than I just have everybody forever. All right, so give me a guy who's worth a flyer at each of these positions. Late in the draft, okay, you're reaching, you're just trying to find the guy that has some upside or is an injury away from becoming the guy. Let's start with running back, the running back position. Give me a flyer at running back. Okay, so I I, I threw out Rico Dowdle for you. Uh, the other one I'll throw out is uh, – let's go – man, it's, it's tough, but I'll go J.K. Dobbins, Los Angeles Chargers, one because – when he's healthy, he his talent is unbelievable to me. I mean, we saw him a couple years ago return from an ACL, gets hurt, misses like six games, and comes back and and he's still hurt, and he averages over seven yards a carry. We we called him uh, uh, JK One L because it was JK One Leg. If you watched him running out there, he's literally throwing half of his body forward, just right. willing it to go down the field. But he's one of those players. Like I talked about Rico Dowdle of the Chargers are going to be a good offense. It's going to be high T. It's going to be the Greg Roman Harbaugh way over there. It's going to be run, 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 run. But it's going to be effective. It always has been effective for Greg Roman offenses. So the fact that J.K. Dobbins is really late and could take over, he could be a steal really late. All right, give me a flyer at wide receiver. Okay, at wide receiver, let me think here. The, the name... It jumps to so – I'll give you two. I'll give you two, guys. Okay. Um, one is Dontavian Wicks of the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. His, his – like the super nerd metrics that we talk about in fantasy football, like yards per route run, targets per route run, these types of things that, that most casual NFL fans have never heard of. He scores really, really well in them, and these are metrics that we use to find guys that can truly break out. The question for him is, will he be on the field? Where they, I mean, they have an embarrassment of riches at the wide receiver position. It just comes down to if Dontavian gets an opportunity, I think that he will come through. And the other one would, I'm going to throw out Khalil Shakir of the Buffalo Bills, had a, an awesome yards per reception this past year. The whole wide receiver crew for the Buffalo Bills is in flux. What you know is the offense will be good. Josh Allen will probably throw for 4,500 passing yards, 30 plus passing touchdowns. It's just who's going to benefit from it. Curtis Samuel already dealing with turf toe. Keon Coleman is a rookie, and he, I think he'll be pretty inconsistent. So it's Shakir is a, is a deep flyer. Dontavion Wixtugats was one of those guys last year that we would pick like over under on on like receiving yards because he'd get like one or two targets a game and he'd break out like a 15 yard reception if he caught the one target that he would get yeah. per game, which is why he was crazy. By the a way, staple of Billy's big board. Yes, <laughs> exactly right. In addition to uh, the 10th anniversary, if you want, you can get the ultimate draft kit at ultimate draft kit dot com. Uh, a portion of that will go to St. Jude's, which you guys have done a great job raising money over the years. Stugatz, you're going to like this. As part of the Ultimate Draft Kit, you can get a risk and upside meter to be checking in on players. Oh, wow. <laughs> what does that look like? Like, Just like explain that to me, Mike. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, meter. so it's it, with all the players, you can see out their, their projections because that's how we do it. Uh, like we, we, we take start at the quarterback and then start divvying things out to the, to the rest of the team. But those are like median projections. Like you know, I I can't I, I can't project that Devon Achan is going to run for eight yards a carry. Like just I can't do that. 
because it's, it's just not being intellectually honest. That's such an outlier. But what I can do then is in his upside meter, I go and I put he's at a nine. So what it, what it looks like when you're looking at the players, it's just an easy little – there's a green bar and a red bar. High red bar means high risk. High green bar means high upside. Wow. Make it easy. I mean, send me the entire kit if you don't mind. Hey, <laughs> send, boys, we send can them, work it out. Send the money. Oh, send the money. That's the point of this. <laughs> Everyone can get it. <laughs> That's the point of this. I'm not going to send you money. I'm just asking for a kit. I mean, it goes to kit. children's hospitals. Dude, I, I'll give you the money. I'll get well, 100 percent go to the children's hospital or no? I, oh, no, I, I pay for a, a portion, a portion, right. man. I got a business to run too. Okay, all right. I would like my 100 percent to go to the children's hospital if you don't buy it. Mike, okay, <laughs> right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You make you make a donation. I'll get you a free draft kit. Okay. Wow. Oh, right. wow. That is, uh, Billy, you're going to have to show me how to make a donation. I've never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're uh, telling on yourself, man. Uh, yeah, I don't care. I've been telling on myself it's for 20 years. telling on himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, give me a flyer quickly here, like a late round guy that you might like at tight end. Ooh, tight end. I mean, Hunter Henry's about as nasty as you want to get there. Okay. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw one more out for you. Let's go. Like we don't know exactly what the Baltimore Ravens passing attack is going to look like, but Isaiah Likely, the other tight end for that team, he was very serviceable. He had Mark some games Andrews. last year. Yeah. yeah, when Mark Andrews went down, Isaiah Likely was an excellent pickup and just a, a full plug and play tight end. And just with the 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 progression of his career. It wouldn't be a surprising thing if their focal point of the offense is Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, and then like they've been trying to find that other wide receiver for years. The, the reports on Rashad Bateman have just – they've always up, always down, getting hurt all the time. It wouldn't surprise me if they switch things up and they feature Isaiah Likely a little bit more. Do you ever give your fake team, your fake players, a fake pregame speech? Like how does that how does that work? Oh, mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. you got you got to order them in your starting lineup appropriately. <laughs> you got like you you move a guy up to RB one. Like like I'm giving you the confidence boost right? today, man. Yeah. I'm putting you with my RB one. Don't let me down. <laughs> You've been promoted to RB one. Yeah, and they care. They like, act like an RB one. Yeah. <laughs> Are you mean like uh, Brian Flores, or are you nice like McDaniel? <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. I'm uh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> I'm more of a McDaniel motivational with positivity. <laughs> uh, what is the thing, since Fuentes brought it up earlier, we haven't heard from him since, uh, the thing that you were proudest of around that desk? Oh, uh, I mean, I love the power line, and I don't know if you can see. I might I might be blocking it. Uh, oh, I'm the weatherman right now. Uh, if you can see... If you can see uh, Bill and Ted back here. Ooh. Big, oh, that's who that is in the, in the orange jacket. I didn't know. Is, is that, yeah, uh, big time Bill and Ted. Is that Donovan McNabb on your bookshelf running? Uh, I don't know. It might be. Right, right, uh, right next to the Vans. Got, oh, number six? Yeah, is that? No, it's Smith then. It has to be Devonta Smith. Yeah. And, mm. I, like, and I like your retro Bucks helmet too. Very oh, nice. that, one's, uh, that one's signed by Mike Evans. Oh, there you go. Wow. Well, I like it more now. <laughs> Send me that too with the kit, all right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, the Fantasy Footballers, you can check them out on Spotify, Apple. You can check out their website, fantasyfootballers.com. Uh, Mike Wright, we appreciate this. We're sorry Nitro couldn't make it. He parlayed his success with you last year into his own fantasy show. So uh, thank you, though, buddy. Hey, no, I appreciate it. Again, I love cutting it up with you guys. You're, just, you're a good group of guys to to talk with, so anytime, you let me know. All right, we'll do it again soon. Uh, my biggest regret is not starting a fantasy show. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'll clip this for our uh, award nominations, too, guys. We're good. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah, Happy you 10th anniversary to you, man. Thank you. All right. And we're back. Yeah. Godless football. Is presented by Smirnoff. We do game days. Please drink responsibly. The Smirnoff Company, New York, New York. Mm. So uh, guys, I feel it. Like, yeah, go ahead, Billy. I have a question for you. It's a, it's a game I'd like to play. I don't know if you want to. Is this a new game? I have a question for you. I mean, no, 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 no. This okay. is a different we game. We have that Did game. You, okay. Yeah. You want to play a game? We have so many games. No, no. Just go ahead. You were talking. Go ahead. Oh, you don't want to. I, the, well, the, what I was going to do is play a game. If you don't want to play a game, we won't. Play. All right, okay. let's let, let's play a new game. I, I think Mikey A is disappointed with our performance in that last segment. But go ahead, let's play a game. 
Well, this game's called Mike Right or Mike Wrong, and here's how it works. <laughs> here's how it works. We had Mike Right on for a long time. I feel like we did a better job by not having Nitro on. We love Nitro. We'd love to yes. have Nitro on again. Would love. Can you to guys check stop it on couching fantasy. your criticism of Nitro by saying you love Nitro? Just it was well, a bad idea. I love Nitro. I love right, Nitro. Okay. Every time you have to put a, quali- a qualifier, though, it's like never good. Like, hey, just well, we love Nitro, but. Yeah. The man was no. an American gladiator. I don't want him thinking I didn't. I don't like him. Okay, we I, love him I so think... much that we didn't invite him back. Anyway, go ahead, Billy. I mean, I think that American Gladiator, and I could be wrong, and maybe someone can look this up. I think that American Gladiator is like a Nobel Prize. Like you are always an American Gladiator, mm-hmm. yes. right? So like always Nobel Prize me. award. Yes. You're always an American Gladiator. Once a Gladiator, always a Gladiator. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I, I am saying how much I love him because I still want to have him on into a fantasy segment with him later okay. on, just Got not it. this week, uh, right? Yes. So in that situation, I think we made the right Mike Wright decision, right? Mm-hmm. But I also believe like we may have boxed out Mike EA. So I think we may have been Mike wrong in that situation. So <laughs> Mike EA, how would you grade the interview that we did with Mike Wright? Mike Wright or Mike wrong? It, it was a little C plus ish. I mean, it Ooh. was it was okay. It was good. Mike you pass. got a lot of good stuff in there. No, I like this. Mikey A, Mikey B, or Mikey C. How about Ooh. that? <laughs> and I'm Mikey wow. F. Wow. <laughs> wow. Billy threw a pen. <laughs> Mikey F if it's really bad. Oh, uh, Mikey go. F too. Mikey D. Mikey F. <laughs> Brutal for me. <laughs> we stumbled on a new game in our first segment called I Don't Know. Well, Mike mm-hmm. Wright knows, and there's so many guys I want to ask about because right. I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. Is yeah. is is Devin A. Chan going to be really good this year, or is he going to take a step back? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Mike Wright might know, but I never got to ask. It's a good question. Never got to ask. Yeah. Well, sorry. Uh, I think we should do a segment, Billy, where we have Mike Wright back on and only Mikey Hay ask questions. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You'll win your fantasy league. I, I, I mean, that. listen, Mikey A has been great to both you and I and this show for many, many years. Loyal, and we love him. And he just wants this one goddamn segment where we ask the right questions. That's all he yeah. wants. I lost my fantasy league, and I had to make a calendar for everybody in the league featuring myself oh, yeah. shirtless. Did you yeah, do that? that we, never, we never got that. Oh, yeah. I definitely did it. So do you have I really you? need... I, I do have one for me. Where is it? Possibly, get it, get it. It's, I, no, I'm definitely not going to get it uh, yet. Oh. Um, they they haven't seen it, so I can't show you guys yet. But When do you give it to I, them? I, I, at the draft, at this year's draft. Ah, what what months are we doing? Are we doing like a we're doing, September? We're doing se- September to August. Okay. Interesting. Wow. I had a theme. Where- in, so, so I lost my fantasy league. So yeah. Mike, the Mike Wright segment is personal to me because I can't yeah. do that again. Okay. It well, bad. T- to be honest with you, I'm more interested in your calendar than your. Of fantasy course you team. are. Everybody <laughs> so is. Like, where where'd you I take have, these pictures? I have people flying. I, Billy, I learned Photoshop for this. this really, is Billy, I'm going to tell you a secret just between me and you. Yeah, so you guys I had see. myself animated. I'm not for one picture. Really, I Ooh. paid a professional illustrator to animate me. That seems like cheating. Billy, if you saw the picture, you would you you wouldn't be upset. No one okay. would have said, you know what, you know what, you cheated. They'd say, thank you for doing this. Is there a, there's a, so there's a theme? There is a theme. Can you I tell us the it, theme at least? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that. It's called a loser through television and film. So it's wow. all famous uh, TV and movie scenes replacing me with the with the star of the movie. Are they all shirtless TV and movie scenes? At or least six are, of them are. As and then per others, the rule, at least. Were others yeah. just scenes that you decided to recreate shirtless? I, I think I chose well. I will okay. say that. Did you choose I, I, uh did you choose running you know sprinting on the beach as Rocky or Apollo? Or? It was it was one of the it was one of the last <laughs> ones to, to, to get the axe. It could wow. only be me. Like I, I couldn't have somebody else in the scene. We didn't spend any time on uh on Tua. I didn't ask for Billy's reaction. I didn't ask Mikey A for his reaction from afar. And the reason is Joe Rose, the big dog, said it perfectly uh a day ago. Why are we still talking about this? 